In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an insanely fast electric skateboard, like this one. And more specifically, how to configure the Freefly Arc 200 motor driver. So, let's get started. If you're not familiar with the Arc, it's a field-oriented brushless motor driver. This means it is much quieter and more efficient than a standard brushless ESC. Let's get started with the setup. We'll start the build process by soldering the motor sensor connectors on. For this build, we'll be using censored motors, but we'll show you how to set up sensorless too. Both work well for skateboards. The difference is that censored motors start spinning a bit more smoothly than sensorless motors. If you're trying to decide between censored and sensorless motors, here's a comparison showing a censored start and a sensorless jitter start. If you have a censored motor, you'll need to solder the arc flying lead cable onto the motor. Motor sensor wiring diagrams can be found on the spec sheet of your motor. Here's the input diagram for the arc. Solder the corresponding wires together from the flying lead to the motor. Red to red, black to black, A to A, B to B, C to C, and white to green. The motor's sensor wires can then easily be attached to the encoder plug on the arc. Next, we'll assemble the trucks, motors, and deck, but we'll hold off on attaching the wheels and drive belts until after we get the ARC 200s set up. This is because the ARC can auto-tune the motor more accurately if there's nothing attached to it. Once the mechanical build is complete, it's time to install the ARC 200s, the battery, and the remote control receiver. We're using the Torque Board's Nano Controller. This plastic enclosure will house all the components and keep them securely attached to the bottom of the board. We marked the ARC mounting hole positions and drilled holes in the enclosure to attach the ARCs in place with M3 bolts. In order to mount the arcs inside the enclosure, we'll need to cut some holes for cooling. To route the phase wires and connectors from each arc out of the enclosure, we cut holes in the back. The bottom face of the arc gets the hottest, so it should be mounted in the airflow. Now we'll start the wiring. If you are using a single arc on your skateboard, you can simply connect the arc to the throttle receiver via the three pin header cable. If you are using more than one arc, you have two options for connecting the throttle inputs together. For this skateboard, we'll be using CAN networking. For this, you'll need the CAN to CAN cable that can be purchased from Freefly. Alternatively, you can connect multiple arcs directly to the throttle receiver's PWM output if you use a primary PWM cable for one of the arcs and a secondary PWM cable for the rest of the arcs. The secondary PWM cable leaves the input opto-isolated. Both primary and secondary cables can be purchased from Freefly. If you're using the CAN networking method, connect the two arcs together via their throttle connectors with the CAN to CAN cable. Once the hardware is set up, it's time to configure the arcs. Be sure to leave your drive belts off until after the arcs are set up. If you're using hub motors, just flip the skateboard upside down so the wheel can spin freely. First, you'll need to install the arc configurator application. It can be found through the link in the description. The arc can be configured via Bluetooth BTLE or via the included USB cable. In order to configure via USB, you may need to install an STM32 virtual COM port driver that can be found on the ARC wiki page. Choose the corresponding COM port or Bluetooth address from the drop down menu, then click connect. Keep in mind that the ARCs need to be powered from the battery in order to connect. You can connect multiple ARCs at the same time by clicking the add new ESC button. We'll start by setting up one of the two ARCs. Then we'll save the configuration to a file and apply it to the second ARC. Do note that there are a few small changes we'll need to make on the second arc after synchronizing the settings. We'll talk about those once we get there. Once connected, navigate to the Configuration tab. This is where you can tune all the arc settings. Click the Setup Wizard button. This will open the General Drive Setup page that walks you through the steps to configure the arc. We'll start in the Auto-Tune tab. It will help you measure important parameters of your motor, like the resistance, inductance, and KV. 
First, click the Load Presets button and apply the Speed Mode Pre-Field Oriented Control Tune Preset. Then close the main window and click Send. Next, click the Measure Pole button. Mark your motor so that you can visually see when one full rotation has been completed. Click the Start Pole Pair Measurement button and then click the Plus One button however many times it takes for the motor to make one full revolution. Once this is complete, click the Save Results and Close button. The next few steps should be pretty self-explanatory if you read the instructions next to each step. Once you get to step 9, select the Slowest with Proportional Compensation option, and then click Run. This will calculate the optimal settings for your motor. Next, click Save and Close, and then Send. Next, click the Auto-Tune Field-Oriented Control button to open the Auto-Tune Field-Oriented Control window. Move this window aside and go over to the Function Generator tab in the main window. In this step, we will need to spin up your motor, so make sure it can spin freely. If the Function Generator is not commanding the motor to spin when you move the slider, go back into the Configuration tab and make sure the Input Throttle Mode is set to QX. In the Function Generator tab, slowly increase the motor command until the magnitude number on the Auto-Tune FOC window remains green, and then click Start. After the test finishes, Click Save Results and Close, and then Send. For Step 14, set the Auto-Tune setting to Slowest with Proportional Control, and then click Run, and then Save and Close. Complete the instructions on Step 15, and then click Send on Step 16. Also click Write to Flash in the Configuration tab. Now, we'll move on to the Sensors Sensorless tab of the General Drive Setup window. If your motor is sensorless, you can simply select Sensorless and move on. If your motor is censored, select the sensor type. Most motor sensors are the three hall sensor type. Then click Launch Encoder Cal. First, select your sensor type and then click the Change Settings button. This puts the arc into QX control mode so that it can be controlled by the slider below. Next, click Send. Now, Slowly increase the speed of your motor until it is between 500 and 1000 RPM. Once the speed is consistent, click Auto Calibration. If the calibration fails, adjust the speed and try again. After the calibration is successful, you can stop the motor with a slider. Then click Save Results and Close. Next, go to the Command tab and then set the control mode. For most skateboard applications, you'll want torque with reverse. Set the input throttle mode to PWM throttle on encoder line. Then launch the input throttle wizard. If your throttle is wired properly, the throttle input number should change as you move the throttle. Go to minimum throttle and set input throttle min. Go to max throttle and set input throttle max. Go to the center and set input throttle zero neutral. Then click Set to plus or minus 5% to calculate a deadband. After this, set the control mode back to Torque with Reverse and click Save and Close. If you have an insanely powerful skateboard like this one and the throttle is really touchy, you can add some Throttle Expo to smooth out your starts. Now we'll move to the Startup tab. If you're using censored motors, you can skip this step. For sensorless motors, set the Torque Mode Startup to Jitter Start. The rest of the settings can be left to their defaults. In the Voltage Limits tab, select the number of cells your battery has. You can also adjust the individual voltage thresholds manually. The under voltage cutoff prevents your batteries from over discharging, and the over voltage cutoff prevents your batteries from overcharging when using regenerative braking. Next, go to the Current Limits tab. Set the max battery draw to the maximum amount of amps that your battery can safely provide. If you're using a dual motor setup, divide that number by 2. This can be calculated by multiplying the capacity in amp hours by the C rating. Max battery regen and max phase regen controls how powerful your regenerative braking is. A good place to start is 20 amps per motor with a dual motor skateboard and 30 amps for a single motor skateboard. Max phase excel current can be set to the maximum number of amps your motor is rated to handle. This can be found on your motor's spec sheet. Be careful because high current draw can make the board accelerate very quickly. A good starting place is 50 amps per motor for a dual motor setup, or 60 amps for a single motor setup. The current limits can also be thought of like this. 
max phase excel current controls the max torque and max battery draw controls the max power. Now we'll move to the drive temperature tab. It can be set to prevent the arc from overheating, but this is very unlikely to happen with normal electric skateboards, so the default settings should be fine. In the speed foldback limits tab, you can configure the maximum RPM, but this can be left untouched for electric skateboard setups, unless you want to put a cap on the max speed. At this point, you can click save and close, and then click send and write to flash in the configuration tab. If you're using two arcs connected together via the CAN to CAN cable, scroll down to the drive specific functions section and set the retransmit commands via CAN as primary option to yes. If your throttle does not spin the motor at this point, make sure your control mode is set to torque with reverse. Now we'll save the settings we just set up into a configuration file and transfer that file to the other arc. In the configuration tab, click save config to file, then choose where to save the file. Once it's saved, connect to the other arc and load the config file. Then click apply and close the window. Then click send and write to flash. Now we'll need to make a few small changes on the second arc. If you're using two arcs connected together via the CAN to CAN cable, set the input throttle mode on the second arc to CAN secondary. Also, make sure the retransmit commands via CAN as primary option is set to no. If you're using censored motors, you'll need to redo the encoder cal step for the second drive. Scroll down in the configuration tab and click the auto encoder cal button and follow the same process you did on the first arc. After you're finished, don't forget to click send and write to flash. All the settings configured by the setup wizard and general setup helper can be quickly adjusted as needed in the configurations tab. We 3D printed the simple wire cover to protect the connectors and prevent the wires from snagging on things. At this point, you can put your drive belts and wheels on and test it out. If the motors seem to behave as they should, give it a test ride. If either or both of the motors spin backwards, swap two of the three motor phase wires. Here are some parameters you may want to play with to dial in your skateboard. If the skateboard accelerates too quickly for your liking, reduce the max phase excel current. If your regenerative braking is too strong, reduce the max phase regen current. If your regenerative braking is too weak, increase the max phase regen current and a max battery regen. If your motors seem to twitch or spin at zero throttle, try increasing the input throttle deadband parameter. One of the cool features of the ARC is that it logs all sorts of data from your rides. To view the data, go to the Log Download tab and select the log you'd like to view. Download the log and then save it to your computer. The logs are saved as CSV files. You can open the CSV in Excel or any other spreadsheet program to visualize the different metrics over the course of your ride. At this point, your electric skateboard should be working well. If you have any questions about the settings we didn't cover in this video, check the ARC wiki page. Happy riding, and thanks for purchasing an ARC 200.